God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the power of the cross. We thank you for it being relevant and being uh, relational to us, every single one of us. And God, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today we got, um, uh, we'll have the scriptures up on the screen. Uh, we're going to be jumping all around uh, with it. But we're going to talk about kind of some things of, of how the cross is so powerful. And so, um, you know, it's Easter it's the very power of God. It, it's the culmination of what God did. Because we go back a couple days ago, Jesus died on the cross, and, and he took on our sin. He took on death. He took on everything. And then the power of the resurrection was he defeated sin, death, the grave, and he defeated the devil. And so as we walk through today, I want you to put it into your perspective of your life. And so I've done the liberty, and we'll walk, I'll, I'll help you walk through it. I've done the liberty of using a translation that I use a lot. It's called the me translation of the Bible. And it's not like I rewrote the Bible, okay, before you start throwing chairs at me. It is, I personalized it to me. So I changed some pronouns. So it's, instead of it saying you, it says me. And watch, it just hits home with that. And so we're going to have uh, some fun with that. But the cross represents a personal gift to you and to me. Anybody ever get... Uh, Christmas gifts, right? It says to Brian from, you know, mom, grandma, whatever. I used to get presents to Brian from the dog, from my mom, okay? I looked forward to those because I knew that dog spent hours shopping uh, for me and all that stuff. But it was a personalized gift to me. Anybody ever get Easter gifts? I used to because I was an only child. No, I got baseball gloves a lot for Easter because the baseball season started. And so I got an Easter gift. It was a personalized gift for me. The cross is a gift to me, to you. Each and every single one of us have a personal gift on the cross. A personal gift that Jesus gave to us on the cross. See, the crazy thing that, that it takes me to comprehend is that even if I was the only one, if I was the only person that ever sinned, that ever fell short of the glory of God, the only person that Jesus needed to go to the cross for, he still would have. Isn't that crazy? It, it's it's, it's mind-blowing to think about because we think, you know, Jesus died for all the world, but we bring it back down and personalize it to us that if we were the only ones, Jesus would have went to the cross for me, myself, for you, yourself. Look at your family member and go, I know you're the one that he could go to the cross for. You know, my wife looks at me like that all the time. But we see that because the devil tries to come in and he tries to depersonalize the cross. He tries to minimize or make it seem like it's not very powerful to you and I. So with some of our batteries that we use are 9 volts, right? Anybody knows that you don't need a battery tester for a 9 volt battery. You just use it on your tongue, right? And then if you, oh, it's not that bad. Or if you're like me and you get a brand new one out and you go, hey, Miles, can you test this battery? You know, but it, it, there's a different type of charge, a different type of electrical. Boom. The devil tries to make it like a dead battery in our lives, the power of that cross. He tries to make it like there's no power. He tries to reduce the power and the impact that the cross has on us. So on our first slide up there, we see everybody knows the scripture. Everybody knows the top part. It says, for this is God so loved the world that he gave us. Uh, no, that's not the right one. Who put that wrong translation up there? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believed in him should not perish and have everlasting life. Well, the me version on the bottom is this. For this is how God loved me. He gave his one and only son so that I can believe in him. If we all said that out loud and we all put I in there, it would be the same. He gave his only son so you could have freedom. And here's the amazing part in verse 17 of that. God sent his son to the world not to judge me or judge you but to save me through him. God's not up there with lightning bolts. He's not up there with rocks. He's not up there with ready for to throw meteors at us because we've sinned, because we've done stupid stuff, because we've messed up. He's there to save us, to love us. You know, when you think of save, you think of like, you know, someone drowning, right? Or someone, you know, that's that's in a, in a pinch or, or they're, you know, in the movies, they're hanging onto a cliff with one finger one, and, and then someone reaches down and grabs their hand. That's what God does for us. When we are when our when our rope is 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 you know, dee, dee, you know the ropes go around. There's one cord left. God comes in and saves us, not judge us, not go, 
Oh, you got one finger on the cliff. Wow, that's not going to last long, is it? He doesn't come over and step on our finger. He doesn't come over our fling finger off the cliff. He comes and saves us. And so that's how it's personalized for us, is the cross is a personalized gift to me. The cross also represents all my guilt, all my sin. And I've got a rap sheet. We'll talk about rap sheets later. Not I'm going to rap about a sheet. A rap sheet. You know, like a, you know, a criminal record type thing. And so anybody have any of them? I'm not looking around. But a rap sheet, you know, and so we'll talk about that later is is that represents this is Jesus in Jesus's day The cross was a sign of death Okay, and I'm not too sure if the crosses, you know, were up there for a while But people knew where Calvary was people knew where it was at and I'm sure that the crucifixion of Jesus wasn't the first one ever and so people seeing what it was and so it, it was they um, people know that if they've been found guilty and the punishment was death, that's where they were going. People knew that. And so I can imagine Jesus as he's praying, not my will, Lord, but you be done. He may have seen the crosses. He may have known where it was physically. He may have been looking down there, but it's surely he knew in his mind what was going on. But the cross represents our sin. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And then, you know, God says, hey, you have sin in your life. And if we were in a courtroom, our accusations would be coming out and we would be guilty of it. But then Jesus says, no, I took that on. I took on that penalty. I took on that as if I did it myself. And so it releases us from that. And so the second slide up there is Philippians chapter two. It says, instead, he, which is Jesus, this is so, this is so cool. He gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. So Jesus was in heaven. He came down to earth as a human and he died a criminal's death on the cross. And, and Isaiah talks about what, what Jesus was going to be going, what was going to be going on. And here it, I, I, I put it into it, it. It personalizes it to me. It says, yet it was my weakness he carried. It was my sorrow that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins, but he was pierced for my rebellion, he was crushed for my sins, he was beaten so I could be made whole, and he was whipped so I could be healed. Another part is, is that is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I got the original one up there, but, but listen to how I'm saying it as you're reading it along. It says, for God made Christ who never sinned, to be the offering for my sin so that I can be made right with God through Christ. That's the power of the cross. He took that burden off of me and carried it. Anybody ever seen somebody carrying something they can't carry? Like it's too heavy for them. They're like they're struggling. There's a vein popping out of their head and all that. Like, oh, this is too heavy. Or anybody see their weightlifters? You know, that they're, they're lifting so much weight the bar bends. That happens to me all the time. I just keep putting weights on, and, and I'm like, this is too easy. The bar's like bent in half. I'm like, come on, they got a struggle here. Come on. But we all know that there's things we can't carry. There's burdens we can't lift. There's things we can't do on our own. Jesus took that upon him on the cross. The cross represents my debt that has been paid. Not my credit card debt. Not my car debt. My debt of sin. Now, I remember years ago, um, well, a couple years, I don't remember what it was. But we had the last car payment ready. And we were, we do it all online now. I wish we would have taken a briefcase with dollar bills. We just put that in my car account. You know, that would been fun. Maybe not. next time we're going to do that. We're going to have a briefcase with a little handcuffs going from our hand to the briefcase like the football. We're going to slide it over and go, my debt is paid. Anyway, we had, we were going to make our last car payment. And it was joyful. It wasn't like, Oh, great. We have to do this now. Click. Oh, no. We don't owe anything on our car anymore. No, it was joyful. The debt was paid. There was, there was going to send us the title. It was now completely ours. The bank didn't own like the rear bumper and, and we owned everything else. We owned the whole thing. And so it was joyful. And so the cross represents our debt that's been paid. What is that debt? It's sin. It's paid. We're, we're, we're not guilty of it anymore. That, that the devil can bring up our past and say, yeah, but you did this. You've done this, 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 and this. And it's like, yeah, that's my rap sheet. But Jesus forgave me about it. 
And Jesus' forgiveness is more powerful than your accusations, devil. Plain and simple. Because we're going to find out later that the devil's defeated. And so the cross represents my debt's been paid. The Bible says everyone's sin falling short of the glory of God. Falling short of God's stand. Plain and simple. And you know what? If that's the first time you hear about it, you've already done it. Okay? Plain and simple. But the cross represents the debt is paid. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sin. We can never do it on our own. I don't care how much uh, work you do, you can't get to heaven by your works. I've given all this money to charity, I've built all these houses, it's still not good enough. You know, the richest man in the world, what's it, Bezos or Elon Musk now? They can give every person in the world a Tesla and still not get to heaven. Who wants to be the first in line with that? Maybe change your oil or something. I don't know. You can give everything, you know, they can give all their money away and still not good enough to get to heaven. It's through the grace of God. The cross represents our debt has been paid. The Bible says God, God in all his fullness uh, was pleased to live in Christ, and through him he reconciled everything to himself. Through him he made peace with everything through Jesus Christ. That's peace means that God's not mad at you. God doesn't hate you. God doesn't want to, he's out to get you. No, it means he's madly in love with you. The cross also represents that I'm forgiven and made holy before God. Everybody say that, I'm forgiven. Say it like you mean it. I'm forgiven. I'm blameless. I've been waiting for my kids to do this. Oh, it's her fault. I'm blameless. I've been waiting for my kids to do that, and they haven't done it yet. But we can say it this way. I'm forgiven, I'm blameless, I'm sinless, I'm faultless. But you say, you know what, I, I have sinned in my life. I've done something. So, you know, I remember, you know, years, you know, at times saying something I shouldn't have on the way to church. We mess up. Simply saying, okay, it's getting ourselves right, man. All right, I messed up. I say, God, I just asked you to forgive me. You know what, I messed up. Help me not to mess up anymore. Because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, things change in your life. Listen, when we say that, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, to clean us of it. If I had a whiteboard, it'd be like wiping it off. Now, whiteboards are a great illustration to use when there's not a whiteboard up here. But the whiteboards that we've always used always leave a little remnant of what's going on. All right? So we wipe it off. It's done. It's gone. It's, 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 you're forgiven. In God's eyes, it's like it's never happened. Does that mean, oh, like it never happened, like I can do it again? No, 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 no. That's the part in our heart where we want to change. We want to make sure we don't do it anymore. Because God had that relationship with Adam and Eve. They walked in the cool of the day. I don't know what that means. Like, they hung out, they went for a walk. I, I don't know. I mean, you go for a walk in Payson and dogs bark at you all the time. That's not very peaceful, you know? But I imagine God walking in to Payson. He's telling that dog to shush and they shush. But they hung out all the time. They had relationship. They had Adam and Eve, and, and they had a, a really, really, really good relationship. And God's like, hey, you got one job. Don't eat that. Anybody ever have one job and just screw it up? I thought about looking at, you know, Googling pictures of you had one job. And I remember there was one, they were painting the side of the, the stripes on the road, and there was a stick in the road, and the paint goes like this. And it's like, can you just move the stick? You know, you had one job. You know, we have our radio and our van has the names of the songs. And sometimes people don't proofread that. Well, I'm not judging because I don't proofread anything. Okay. I, I don't, I'm, I'm just saying, but it's like, man, you had one job and you messed up. And, you know, they had one job. And, and they, 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 they could eat anything else, but the devil deceived them and they did it. Plain and simple. But see, that power of the cross brought that relationship back where we can now have that kind of relationship with God. Well, why do I need that kind of relationship with God? I got everything I need. I'm glad you asked. And so we see, we see in slide, the next slide here, Hebrews chapter 9. For Christ did not enter into the holy place made with human hands, which was only a copy of the one in heaven. He entered into heaven itself. <laughs> to appear before God on our behalf. He did not enter heaven to offer himself again and again like the high priest here on earth who enters the most holy place year after year with the blood of an animal. We'll do a little time out. 
back in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice an animal for their sin. Jesus became the one-time sacrifice for those sins. So it's all been already been done, okay? And so just as each person is destined to die once and after comes judgment, so also Christ was offered once and for all as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. Or you could just take those three words out of many people and put the sins of, of, of me, of my sins. And he'll come again not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly await him. Jesus, the cross, was a once and for all sacrifice. We don't, no more sacrifices need to be made. And so just asking for forgiveness, just walking in that power, saying, God, I ask you to, to forgive me. The, the Bible says that the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from sin. The Bible also says we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. There's that relationship time. There's that hanging out. There's that, you know what? I don't need know what to do. I have, I have this situation in my life I don't know what to do with. That's when you ask God. You can talk to him while you're driving your car. You can talk to him. Just don't close your eyes. You can talk to him while you're walking down the street. You can talk to him while you're, while you're laying in bed and your mind's just racing all the time. You can talk to him any time of the day because of the power of the cross. You see, the cross represents my new life in Jesus. I got to thinking of a really neat illustration about this new life in Jesus, and I couldn't think of one. And then I got to thinking, you know what? You everybody have somebody on Facebook you're not really friends with? They kind of like you know each other because, oh, you know, I, I have that a lot from summer camp. Like, you know, people at summer camp, we, we would go to camps and there would be people friends with, and you'd see them occasionally. Then you're flipping through your Facebook feed and you're like, who's this? I don't know who this person is. They got married. They got a different last name. It's the same person, but it's a new, lot, new, new identity. And so I got to thinking about that, and I, I saw uh, Paige walk in, and before her, her, you know, her, her contact on my phone was her old name. And now I was like, I never go in and update married names on my phone. So I got to thinking about that. It's a new life. It's a new identity. Because of the cross, we have a new life. Same, only different. I used to use that terminology when I was working at an auto parts store because the guy would need brake pads and rotors and they would be the same thing that he had on the car, but they were different because they were new, shiny, rust free. That's what the cross does for us. It's a new life. It's we're the same person, but we're different. I'm when I accepted Christ, when I started living my life for God, I was the same person. I had the same thought processes going on in my head, but I had better, better jokes. Okay. I don't know why my jokes have gotten bad over time, but my wife's what my wife says. And so it's the same, everything's the same, but it's different because I wanted to change. I wanted to do things differently. You see, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3, it should be on the screen there. It says that since you've been raised to new life with Christ through the resurrection, we've been raised. Set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits at the place of honor at God's right hand. And it goes on to say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. That's a different way of saying the old you is, is, is gone. Don't participate in it anymore. Don't, don't do that anymore. Do the new life. Use the power of the cross. The cross represents healing for me. We're in the series uh, right now at our church. We're in a series called of the Matters of the Mind, dealing with the mental health stuff, dealing with things that go on in our head, dealing with thoughts that are like a bouncy ball inside our brain. God, Jesus didn't just die on the cross for our sins. He died for our health. He died for healing. He died for, for every part of our bodies to be made whole. And so Jesus was not, not only spiritual connection with us, he wants a physically healthy and mentally healthy connection as well. In Isaiah uh, chapter 53, verse 5, it's on the screen there. Slide 5, it says, uh, He was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so we could be we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. All aspects of healing, by his wounds. One translation of that says, by his stripes, we are healed. We're healed already. It, it, healing's there. Having a sound mind is there. Having, um, you know, uh, uh, 
Good thought processes is there. It's already there. Jesus provided all of that through the cross. We're getting ready to close here in a second, but the last one we want to talk to is the cross represents my freedom and my victory. The cross represents freedom and victory from death, hell, and the grave. The resurrection is the full compass of that. It, it provides victory for me. Jesus defeated the devil. The cross represents our freedom from victory. It represents victory over sin. It represents victory over Satan. Victory over sickness. Victory over death. Victory over habits. Victory over addictions. Victory over anything the devil throws at us. Victory. Now, you might be saying, oh, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked that too. Jesus defeated the devil on the cross. Jesus died, went to hell, and beat the devil up, plain and simple. And, and does the enemy have power in this world? We see him doing all kinds of evil things, and, and if you look at the news feeds, you can just see it. We're getting closer to the end times day by day by day by day. The devil is trying to do all types of evil works in this world, but we've been delivered and set free over that we have the victory no matter what is going on god said i wanted a relationship with you so much that he sent jesus down and he walked among us to get us the victory over the devil and 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 this is this is really going to bring it home but slide six up there hebrews chapter two because god's children are human beings made of flesh and blood the son also became flesh and blood the son is jesus for only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he be set could he only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives to slaves of fear of dying. In other words, Jesus broke the power of the enemy. He broke it. The Amplified Version says this. Therefore, since these his children share in flesh and blood the physical nature of mankind jesus himself in a similar manner also shared the same physical nature but without sin so through and he experienced death that he might make powerless he made the devil powerless ineffective impotent him who had had the power of death the devil and that he might free all those who uh fear death were held in slavery to their lives. Jesus stripped the devil of all the power that he had. You could say it like this. He defeated the devil, and then he transformed, he, he pulled him around hell, and he showed all the, the devils and demons and all the people that the devil knows, he showed him that devil was defeated. He drug him around. Remember David and Goliath? David killed and chopped Goliath's head off, and then he put Goliath's head so everyone could see that Goliath was dead. Jesus did that to the devil. I wish he just would have cut his head off and we'd be done with him, but that's later on in life. Jesus stripped the power of the devil and all the authority. In one translation says it brought him to zero. Anybody ever do video games? You like health? Like, you know, you have health, your, your health, and you get beat up and your health goes down. The devil's a zero. It never goes up. It's a zero. Zero loser right okay Woo so her. The Jesus made the devil of no effect anyway you know I like messing with my son a little bit he'll come up and he'll, we'll be wrestling around he'll punch me and I'm like you can do anything like is there a mosquito around here did you do something you know he'll hit me as hard as so I'm like are you even here like what's going on you know, I'll make him feel like his punches have no effect. Sometimes they do, but it gets me really good. I'll make him think that it has no effect. Because the devil, the devil has no effect. He's a big fat zero. I know I can overcome the devil because I learned a long time ago, anything is greater than zero. Right? Anything is greater than zero. The devil makes us think he's got power, but he has been defeated. We can read that again if it's still up there. He said he might, that Jesus might make powerless, ineffective, impotent, him who had the power of death, that's the devil, 
and that he might free all those who, through the fear of death, were held in slavery throughout their lives. The devil has no hold on you. The power of the cross, through Jesus' resurrection, he has no hold on you. And if he does has, if he's tempted you around, you can tell him to leave you alone. He needs God to listen. He's, the devil has no power. In closing, Romans chapter 6, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives, that we are no longer slaves to sin. That's taking it back back then because back then there were slaves and masters. There were people that were slaves and they had no choice to it anymore. They had to do what their master tells them to. In our lives, we may have a sin or an addiction or, or something in our lives that keeps telling us to do something. It keeps having power over us. And Jesus said through that cross, through his resurrection, that when Jesus died, we died with Christ and we were set free from that power. We're set free from it. We're no longer slaves to sin. When sin tries to come and shackle you, just tell you just leave it alone. No, I'm not a slave to you. You have no power over me. The last slide we'll we'll look at it here is really, really, really good. Save the best for last. It said, He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross. You lied to your mom when you were 10. Nail it to the cross. You stole something that wasn't yours. Nail it to the cross. You said something you shouldn't have. You did something really bad. Shouldn't have. Nailed it to the cross. That our rap sheet, the charges against us, were nailed to the cross. The devil will try to bring it up. Well, don't you remember back in 1987 when you did this? Oh yeah, God forgave the devil. So just stop and go away. Anybody ever have someone in your life that's just real annoying? Don't point fingers. Yeah, my wife's looking at me. <laughs> you just tell them to go away. Go away. Just go. I tell my dog, I don't, well, I pretend I don't like it. I don't like it. The dog always comes to me when we have popcorn. Even when we don't have popcorn, she'll smell it and come to me. And she'll grunt and groan and make these stupid, cute faces. And, and she'll, and I'm like, just go away. And I'll tell her to go play in the street. Go find a friend. Go play in traffic. Go away. I jokingly say it that way because if you ever had someone that's annoying you, you tell them to go away. Just be gone. Go away. When the devil tries to bring up our past, just go away. Go away. Go away. Hey, you. Go away. Devil, go play in the street. You see, the power of the cross cancels everything we've done wrong. The power of the cross gives us power to tell the devil what to do. It breaks this. Now, the message translation is really good. Having canceled out the certificate of death consisting of the legal demands which were enforced against us, that's our rap sheet, and which we were, were we were, which were hostile to us, which they kept reminding us. And this certificate he has set aside and completely removed by nailing it to the cross. It's gone. It's removed from us. What do you mean by removed? Well, anybody got some money, cash on you? If you gave it to me, it's removed from your wallet. You don't get it back. Think of it that way. Then he says. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having trampled over them through the cross. He defeated our enemies and embarrassed them. He defeated the devil. This is the victory we have because of the victory Jesus had on the cross. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we have freedom, we have healing, we have health, we have salvation, forgiveness, that all of our sin, that our debt has been paid, that we have victory, 
all because of the cross of Jesus. God, I thank you for forgiving people of the crazy things we've done. I don't want to say they've done. I don't want to point the finger, but we've all done crazy things. And maybe you're here, maybe you're hearing my voice and you don't know what it means to be forgiven. Well, Jesus gave forgiveness on the cross. And it's simply by saying, God, forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord, be my Savior. And when you do, he wipes everything away. He throws it to the cross and it's gone. And in our lives, the devil is made powerless because we are sons and daughters of God. So as you're here today and, and, and as you're we're moving into the next part of our service, we're going to have communion here for the first time in over a year. I apologize for the crackers. They're not the best. But Jesus suffered more on the cross. As I've heard earlier today. So, you know, pass these out there. So, get the nice prepackaged cracker and juice, and we'll, we'll take care of it here in a second. When you get when you get the elements, just close your eyes, and if you don't want to partake in it, that's fine. You don't have to. It's between you and God. Just close your eyes and. Focus your thoughts in on God. Focus your thoughts in on what Jesus did for you, what that cross meant for you, what his resurrection means for you. Just think about, you can think of it this way. What does, what does the cross mean to you? What did Jesus do for you? And then, and then what have you done with him? So, I've never opened one of these before. It's kind of cool. We'll take the cracker out first. I apologize for its styrofoamness. But that's just how we are today. So just take the cracker. And back in the, the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, This is my body. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And we take communion because of what Jesus did on the cross. Because his body was broken for us. Remember that by his stripes we were healed scripture? That's what we're talking about. Let's go ahead and break it up. Dang, I can't open the cup up there. Got some grape juice in it. The juice represents the blood of Christ. We use a stain-free version of the blood of Christ. We, in the last, uh, he took the cup and he said, hey, this is my blood. The blood represents forgiveness of sins. And as as we're sitting here today, and, and you, may, you may have a rap sheet still attached to you, not to the cross. You can simply say, God, I ask you to forgive me because of the blood of Jesus. God, I'll forgive you because of the blood of Jesus. blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God, I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you, Lord God, for the power of the cross. I thank you, Lord, as we leave this place, we can enjoy the nice weather and, and the almost summer-like conditions, but we can also experience a freedom like we've never experienced before. Because we walk out of here without a rap sheet walk out of here with the victory. Our head held high, chest puffed out, because we have the victory. 
We have the victory over sin. We have the victory over death. We have the victory over the devil. We have the victory over addictions, over sin, over all these different things. We have the victory. God, I thank you for that. I encourage you not to walk out of here without having a little conversation with God. Father, we just thank you as we go from this place, we can be a blessing to others. As we go from here, we can encourage others, we can put others before ourselves, and we can be a huge blessing to people in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.